We get some winter observations with sensors that we put out there all winter long, and we don't get that data back until we go out there and pick the instrument up in the springtime. If you're trying to make a decision that might relate to, for instance, a drinking water manager, then you don't have that information in real time. You can't make immediate decisions based on it. Our research vessel that, that's in the water, but we really can't get out of the channel because the channel is filled with ice and it would do damage to the boat to get out. No one has an ice-hardened hull that they can actually get out there and break ice and continue to do research. And so that's a limitation that we want to overcome with autonomous vehicles. NOAA's role in the Great Lakes is understanding the Great Lakes from an ecosystem standpoint. And to do that, we have to observe physical properties like temperatures, the waves, the currents, but also looking at the ecosystem parameters around the chemistry and the biology. And we're very successful at doing that. And as we're in right now, the ice season, observing ice, ice thickness, ice characteristics, what we're looking at is how do we take advantage of advanced technology, autonomous underwater systems, or autonomous air systems to begin to fill in the gaps in the winter season. But as we've seen lately, you know, we're getting all the way to Mars and they've put a number of instruments on that vehicle. We can now take advantage of some less expensive systems that can get us out when we have ice cover, when we normally wouldn't be able to get our research vessels out. And that's what we want to get to, is get into a situation where we can assist drinking water managers, the United States Coast Guard, and even our own researchers in, in interpreting and understanding what's happening out there in real time.